Hello and welcome to 90s Month. We will be looking at G.I. Joe toys released in the 1990s. And since the 90s was the extreme decade, we will be looking at G.I. Joe Extreme! No, no, this figure is not from G.I. Joe Extreme. This is from 1993. We're not quite extreme yet. In 1993, G.I. Joe was MEGA! 90s Month continues with our first look at the Mega Marines! Lunar Cobra Commander 788 here and welcome to the second review of 90s month. Yes, October is the month of Halloween and Halloween is filled with lots of spooks and ghouls and that is pretty extra I, uh, MEGA! So this week we are going to look at Mega Marines Gung Ho! The Mega Marines were introduced in 1993 and were only available that year. They added yet another science fiction element to G.I. Joe. They also tried to capitalize on the neon colors that were popular at the time. Gung Ho is also one of my favorite characters. I really loved the first version of Gung Ho in 1983. This figure also came with a special bonus feature. Play-Doh! I mean, moldable bio armor. Mega! Seriously though, it's Play-Doh. Oh, but this isn't just any Play-Doh though. I bought this particular figure because its canister of Play-Doh had never been opened. It was still sealed. This is 24 year old Play-Doh. Do you want to see what 24 year old Play-Doh looks like? Well, you're gonna see it. And I can tell you right now, it's mega! Let's look at the final vintage version of G.I. Joe's first marine, Gung Ho. This is the 1993 G.I. Joe Mega Marines Commander Gung Ho. This is the fifth version of Gung Ho. It was available only in 1993. It was discontinued for the year 1994. Mega Marines was a sub-team within G.I. Joe created in 1993 to fight against mutant mega monsters created by Dr. Mindbender. The mega monsters were mutated Cobra troops. Why was G.I. Joe fighting mutants in the 1990s? Let's see what else was popular at that time. Yeah, this is another example of Hasbro chasing trends. The Mega Marines had only one vehicle, the Monster Blaster APC. I did a video unboxing and assembling the Monster Blaster, and I have to admit, it's a pretty cool vehicle. Why Mega Marines? Gung Ho was a Marine, so that makes sense. He's the Mega Marines leader. But the Mega Marines also included Clutch, and he was not a Marine. So if the Mega Marines include non-Marines, why are they called that. Most likely answer, aliens. The 1986 movie featured the Colonial Marines. They were really cool and badass, and Hasbro wanted G.I. Joe to be like that. Except Hasbro had already done a Colonial Marines ripoff with Battle Force 2000 in 1987. Also, the Colonial Marines did not wear neon colors. They looked like real futuristic military. That's one of the things that made them look cool. So Hasbro has badly missed the mark here. So why wasn't G.I. Joe's other prominent Marine from the 1980s, Leatherneck, a member of the Mega Marines? Well, that's because in 1993, Leatherneck was a little busy hunting giraffes. I'm not going to say giraffe trousers Leatherneck is the worst thing ever, but you could say it. I won't stop you. Version 1 of Gung Ho was introduced in 1983, the second year of 1980s G.I. Joe. Version 2 was released in 1987, wearing U.S. Marine Corps dress blues. Version 3 of Gung Ho was released in 1992. There were two versions of Gung Ho from 1993. I don't have version 4, but that was just a reuse of the mold from version 3 in different colors. Version 5 was the Mega Marines version. Version 1 was famous for having a chest tattoo of the Marine Corps emblem. Version 2 was wearing a dress uniform, so of course the tattoo was covered up. Version 3 makes the tattoo on the chest smaller. 
That's not how tattoos work. They don't just move around. Version 2 removes the tattoo entirely. Version 5 again has the tattoo covered up. I missed the tattoo. It was one of Gung Ho's defining features. Let's take a look at the card for Gung Ho. I have the full card back this time. And I have to say, the artwork is not good. The proportions are off. The left arm holding the gun looks too small, and it doesn't look like it bends in the right place. His head is just sort of floating above his shoulders. It has instructions in the space behind the figure. Uh, based on this, it looks like the bio armor is supposed to be used for the missiles as well well. We'll take a look at that later. I like this part. Play-Doh modeling compounds sold separately can be used in addition to moldable bio armor. We are really trying to sell the idea that this moldable bio armor isn't really just Play-Doh. Oh sure, you could use Play-Doh too. I mean, you could steal it from your younger sister or something. But moldable bio armor has G.I. Joe on the lid. It's like calling a doll an action figure so boys would buy it. Flipping the card around to the back, we have the other Mega Marines and the Mega Monster enemies. Oddly, Dr. Mindbender is not included in this, even though it mentions Dr. Mindbender in the description. And there was a new version of Dr. Mindbender in 1993, but it was not in the Mega Marines series. The figures are numbered, which makes no difference since you don't have to buy them in any particular order. The figures also have numbers on them, but those numbers do not correspond with the numbers in the series, so who cares? We have some battle core figures here and then we have the file card. The file card is neon green and quite ugly but it isn't as hard to read as the salmon colored file card for supersonic fighters rock and roll. Let's take a look at the accessories starting with the helmet. Uh, the helmet is orange. It looks like a firefighter's helmet. It has a microphone and a flap on the back. This helmet is totally unsuitable for combat and it doesn't fit on the figure's head very well. Look at this. It pops off. You press it on and it pops right back up. Not a fan of the helmet, so let's look at the spring-loaded missile launcher, also in that orange color. I do not have the figure holding this because it does not fit in his hand very well. A lot of 90s figures came with these spring-loaded missile launchers. This one is not original to Gung Ho. It came with a couple other figures in 1993 and in almost the same color. Uh, with this bright orange color, Gung Ho is really trying to make sure his enemy can see him. This is intended to be slung under the figure's forearm. The hand goes through this opening and the grip is on the top. It came with two black missiles and it could be operated by placing the missile in the missile launcher with the notch side down. Slide it in until it clicks. Uh, and then the trigger is here on the bottom. Let's test the missile launcher by taking out Dr. Mindbender. Let's look at the bio armor mold, and this works with the main gimmick on the figure. Uh, this is used to mold the Play-Doh onto the figure, and it also molds warheads on the missiles, so we'll look at that. This, of course, works with the moldable bio armor. Uh, that came in a black canister with a red lid and a silver label. It is sealed with tape. When I purchased this toy, this canister of Play-Doh had never been opened. This is 24-year-old, never used before Play-Doh. This is what makes this review special. What other G.I. Joe reviewer would dare to open 24-year-old Play-Doh and show you what it looks like? Are you ready for this? Let's pop the cap off the canister and there it is. This is 24-year-old Play-Doh. It is hard, it's completely solid, except some parts have been crystallized. It has crumbled a bit, but it certainly doesn't look anything like Play-Doh. It's more of a, uh, a rock. It tastes surprisingly kind of minty. Well, we can't test the bio armor mold with this, so I got a fresh can of Play-Doh in red, since that seems to be the color the original was. So we're going to use this to test out the bio armor mold. This is supposed to be really easy. You just take some Play-Doh and put it in the back half, and then take a little bit more Play-Doh and put it in the front half, and then you press this on the figure. The instructions say to point the arms straight out and to press the mold halves together on 
on the figure. I can already tell this is going to be excess, so I'm going to take this off. Now let's pop this mold apart and see how the bio armor looks. And there is the moldable bio armor. Oh, that's a relief. I'm so glad this doesn't look stupid. With the bio armor on, Gung Ho has a wild mix of colors. Yellow, green, orange, red. He might as well carry a sign that says, shoot me. In fact, I'll bet you could carve that into the bio armor. There. Fixed it. I know with this Play-Doh armor you can simulate battle damage, but I'm mainly concerned with getting it off the figure without leaving any bits of Play-Doh in the crevices. This bio armor mold also makes a warhead for the missiles, so let's demonstrate that. Place the missile in and squeeze the mold halves together. Now pull it apart and we'll need to remove the excess. There we go. Now let's see how this fires with a Play-Doh warhead on it. All right, once again, let's take out Dr. Mindbender. It still fires fine. It doesn't make much difference, though. The rest of the accessories came on this black accessories tree. The two black missiles were on here as well. None of the accessories that were on this tree were exactly original, uh, but there were some differences from the original issues. This machete is very similar to the machete that came with Muskrat and was later re colored and packaged with a lot of other figures, including Colonel Courage and Robo Joe. The mold was slightly altered from the original, but I don't know why they bothered. It is still mostly the same. This submachine gun originally came with Tracker from 1991 and was reused many, many times. This rifle originally came with Grunt, version 3 from 1991, but the rifle that came with Grunt had two holes bored in to the side so it would connect to his missile launcher. This shotgun originally came with Muskrat from 1988 and it is very similar to that original Muskrat shotgun, only minor differences in the details. Let's take a look at the articulation for Gung Ho. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures by 1993, meaning he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder about so far and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow so he could bend at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep so he could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Gung Ho. Version 1 of Gung Ho was one of my favorite figures from 1983. I thought version 2, while not having much play value, was a fitting tribute to the Marine Corps. Everything after version 2, though, does not work for me. Of course, the first version looks a bit silly in hindsight with the open vest and tattoo, but I still liked it. That figure started a lifelong fascination with the U.S. Marine Corps. Later versions, though, just don't look like gung-ho to me. Let's look at his head. He has a bald head and a mustache, a black mustache, even though his original mustache was brown. Gung-ho was always bald, but in version 1, he had his Marine Corps utility cover. Later versions took his hat away, leaving his head looking like a cue ball. Give the man his dignity. Let him have his hat. On his chest he has bright yellow shoulder pads and a yellow bandolier with orange pouches. He had to have pouches because it was the 90s and Rob Liefeld was popular. On his chest he has a black circle with a sculpted number one on it. On the card art that one is yellow, but there is no yellow paint on the number on the figure. I have mixed feelings about this. The number is an unpainted detail, which is usually a problem for me, but the yellow number on the card looks like something out of Sesame Street, so it's a wash. On his arms, he has yellow shoulder coverings, which conveniently stop at the arm swivel so they don't have to be painted. There's still some Play-Doh gunk in there. That stuff is impossible to get out. He has green sleeves with yellow forearm pads and gloves, and the detail on the forearm pads and gloves is is not bad. If they were in a different color, they would be great. On his waist piece, he has that green and black camouflage. Again, pretty good, but then he has a bright yellow belt and crotch covering. On his legs, we see green trousers with more of that black marbled camouflage pattern. Man, they could have done something with that if they hadn't covered it up so much. He has thigh straps, sort of. They're kind of big thigh coverings. On the left side, he has a pouch, which the file card calls a survival slash medical kit. The page 
paint mask on the thigh straps isn't too good. Some of the yellow paint spills over to the leg detail. That's poor quality control. He has tall yellow boots that go up to his knees, and he has a square knife on his right shin. The detail on these boots is really pretty good, but I have another big problem with them. Because there is no paint on the lower legs, there is a color mismatch between the green thighs and the yellow knees, and that is very obvious when you bend the knee. That looks very ugly, and I will always have a problem with this. Let's take a look at Gung Ho's file card, and this is one of those 90s file cards that has a list of the features on the figure. I am not going to read through those. I'm going to focus on the character of Gung Ho. His code name is Gung Ho, and he is the Mega Marine leader. Since he was G.I. Joe's first Marine, I have no problem with that. File name is Etienne R. Lafitte. Primary military specialty is biomilitary expert. Secondary military specialty, heavy weapons. In contrast, on his original file card from 1983, his military specialties were Recondo and Jungle Warfare Training Instructor. His grade is E9, Sergeant Major, and that is a promotion from his version 1 file card that had him as an E7. But like rock and roll, that promotes him over Duke, who in 1992 was was still an E8 Master Sergeant. I do want to see Gung Ho get promoted, but I also prefer Duke to be the highest ranking non-commissioned officer on the team. I think his role on the team should be reflected in his grade. We have a quote here, presumably from Gung Ho himself. It says, this isn't just another bug hunt, it's war. Well, the Bio Viper is kind of bug-like, so I guess that could be the bug hunt he's talking about, but the Monstro Viper isn't a bug. This paragraph says, born on the bayou, Born on the bayou. Gung Ho's background in hostile environments and experience in the U.S. Marine Corps made him a natural choice to command the Mega Marine forces. Gung Ho knows you can never be sure where or when a Mega Monster will turn up, so you have to be prepared at all times. At all times! He demands that his Mega Marines sleep with one eye open. Sleep with one eye open! That way they won't think it's just a nightmare they're having when the mega monsters really attack. Is that meant to be literal? Because if so, it sounds dumb. Even if you could force yourself to sleep with one eye open, that doesn't mean you're conscious and aware of what's going on. Gung Ho is known for his effectiveness in neutralizing the most dangerous enemies, a skill that will be put to the test fighting these genetically enhanced creeps. But I'm a creep. A lot of music references in this one. Looking at how Gung Ho was used in G.I. Joe media, he appeared in the very first G.I. Joe cartoon in 1983. He wore his version 1 uniform for that. He appeared many times in the original series, but he never appeared in his Mega Marines uniform. As far as I can tell, he didn't appear at all in the Deke animated series in the 1990s, which is unfortunate. He was mostly forgotten after his brief appearances in the 1987 animated movie. His next animated appearance was in Valor vs. Venom, which is outside the scope of this review. In the G.I. Joe comic book by Marvel Comics, he was introduced in issue number 11, along with a lot of other characters from 1983. I can't find a reference for this version of Gung Ho in the comic book either, so I guess that makes the media section of this review easy. Awesome. Party time. Looking at Mega Marine's Gung Ho overall, it has Play-Doh. Now, there's nothing wrong with Play-Doh. Lots of kids played with Play-Doh. I played with Play-Doh. It's a fun toy. It's a fun toddler toy. Take a look at the age of the kids Play-Doh was marketed to. Demolition Dave loves to make things crash. So mom got a monster truck, bold and mash. Bold and mash, go to have a bash. Bold and mash, it's a monster truck smash. Take this is not the age group for G.I. Joe. That kid can't play with G.I. Joe because he would eat the small pieces. Here's my theory about kids. No kid other than a toddler wants to be treated like a toddler. But imagine Mega Marines Gung Ho without the Play-Doh. How does the figure hold up? Well, the sculpting is pretty well done. In fact, I would say the 90s was a great era for sculpting on G.I. Joe figures. I've heard some G.I. Joe pundits say we should ignore the hidden colors and focus on the sculpting. 
No! The color scheme was an artistic choice. There is no reason to ignore it. The designers will be graded on the whole project, not just part of it. The base color of the figure is pretty good. I'd go so far as to say the camouflage pattern is brilliant, but it is totally lost behind the day glow yellow. I want to hate the Mega Marines too. This is yet another example of Hasbro chasing the trends that were popular at the time. And I can't help but detect a hint of resentment at their competitors in the fact that the mutants are the enemies of the Mega Marines. I don't hate the Mega Marines though. The Mega Marines actually make a pretty compelling self-contained narrative. You have a mad scientist that turns people into monstrous mutations and you have a squad of specially equipped soldiers that has to hunt them down in one badass vehicle. Round them up! <laughs> That's not bad. You could do something with that. Just not in G.I. Joe. As I've said before, the essence of 80s children's entertainment was the fantasy universes in which they existed. Transformers had a universe, He-Man had a universe, G.I. Joe had a universe. And in each of those universes, there were rules. Everything that happens in those universes has to make sense, because if it doesn't, it breaks the fantasy. From the very beginning of the Real American Hero line, great efforts were made to give it a sense of military authenticity, with a few science fiction elements thrown in to spice it up. The file cards were filled with real world references. They told us G.I. Joe existed in a world very much like ours, with a few differences. This wasn't He-Man. There's nothing wrong with He-Man, but this was wasn't he man, this was G.I. Joe. As the line went on, they stretched those rules. You can decide yourself where the breaking point was. For me, the breaking point was Cobra Law in 1987. And the Mega Marines are way past the breaking point. They're just too mega. I'll punctuate that point by leaving you with the words of Larry Hama from the foreword of Mark Belomo's Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe Volume 2. What I have attempted vainly to impress upon the unnamed nabobs of industry is the importance of the totality of interconnecting internal agreements that compromise the solid base upon which even the most absurd fantasies stand upon. In other words, it's all got a jive, dude. Those words to me are mega, and they are the essence of my objection to the Mega Marines and Cobra Law and all the other silly elements that were added to G.I. Joe. Even if they would have been fine on their own, they don't fit in the universe you were trying to force them into. That was my review of Mega Marines Gung Ho. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like it on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel and share the video to help this channel grow. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. 90s Month continues next week. I'll see you there. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Joe. Mega Marines. Cobra City's Mega Monsters are unstoppable. The Mega Monsters attack with crushing tentacles and gruesome gut bombs. But G.I. Joe Mega Marines come equipped with pressure-molded bio-armor. <laughs> Battle damage. And here's the G.I. Joe Monster Blaster APC with its lock and load cannon. Lock, load, fire. <laughs> Come with bio armor. Cobra Mega Monsters and G.I. Joe Monster Blaster APC. Figures and vehicles sold separately. Cave Lab set not available. You Cobra Monsters are pretty tough, but I'm gung ho. Mega!